Hello, we are Drs. Marie Grace and Jean-Francois Michel. We are both clinicians and clinical researchers from Rennes and Dijon, France. In a previous film, Professor Hessem Nauseri of the University of South California in Los Angeles, USA, showed you how an Asian bacterium can be transmitted from one child to another, and how it can spread and create functional and aesthetic damages. These can provoke associated general diseases, which can cause difficulties in eating and the destruction of a child's beautiful smile. What comes to mind when you hear the word bacteria? For the longest time, humans have had preconceived notions about bacteria, thinking that all kinds of bacteria are bad. The truth is, not all bacteria are bad. There exist good bacteria that are also vital for humans. However, bacteria, whether good or bad, do not look at the world the same way humans do. They do not choose who to affect. No individual is spared from these microorganisms. They attack regardless of age, social class and population. And because there are certain types of bacteria that are good for humans, then this behavior is acceptable to some extent. The dangerous bacteria live among us. They adapt and develop strategies to survive until they eventually harm the host organism on which they develop. Furthermore, these bacteria will work doubly hard to survive at the expense of the host that shelters them. They spread to implant and thrive in other areas of the host environment which will eventually cause disease. The primary reason for the spreading and worsening of conditions from bad bacteria would be migration of people from one place to another, thus undergoing changes in dental consultation which can lead to inconsistency of treatment. Our mission is to improve the oral health of the street children who have found refuge in the Verlani Foundation. The Verlani Foundation is a non-government organization founded by Mr. Dominic LeMay, a French social worker based in Manila, Philippines. For the past six years, we have become aware of the serious oral health problems in addition to socioeconomic difficulties that these children face. These problems are caused by non-treated periodontal diseases and dental caries, which lead to the destruction of their smile and eventually the loss of their teeth at a very young age. The cause is the very same bacterium that is also found in Africa, India, and the United States. Certain bacteria live in symbiosis with our oral cavity. Others, on the other hand, are dangerous and provoke destruction of the gingiva and the alveolar bone. This eventually leads to tooth loss and ruins the smile. Amongst these harmful bacteria, AA is one of the most dangerous. Another bacterium is PG that can also provoke important damage. Most often, these less fortunate children are the ones most affected by these bacteria. They cannot benefit from the treatment received by children in developed countries. As a result, loss of their teeth is inevitable. And aside from physical suffering, tooth loss can be damaging to a child's self-esteem. More than 400 street children are sheltered, nourished, and educated in the foundation. The foundation is divided into 12 homes in which the children are grouped according to age, sex, or a special need. The foundation's workforce is a team composed of Filipino and foreign social workers, professionals, volunteers, donors, and sponsors. The children's daily needs are supported by the workforce, and these children are trained to eventually grow up to be independent, responsible, and self-sufficient adults. Most of these children have lived difficult lives, being abandoned, abused, exploited, neglected, or orphaned. Life in the streets have deprived them of their basic human rights and their needs, such as food, clothing, shelter, and clean water and hygiene. Dental and periodontal disorders associated to general diseases are prevalent, which further aggravates these children's lives. For each mission, our dental team is composed of 20 French and Filipino volunteers. Dentists, nurses, dental assistants, hygienists, and a laboratory technician. Our three main goals are, number one, treat to alleviate suffering and bring back these children's smiles. Number two, follow-up. 
through regular monitoring, maintenance, and allowing future treatments if needed. Number 3. Prevention Without prevention, the cause of these dental problems will never be eradicated. Thus, only prevention can sustainably improve dental health. To be able to accomplish these goals, the Verlani Foundation included our team into their medical program. Every year, the medical center, which houses the medical and psychological clinic, is transformed into a dental clinic with two mobile dental chairs for basic dental treatment, two for dental surgery, one for dental prophylaxis, a sterilizing area, and a dental prosthetics laboratory. Each child in the foundation goes through an oral examination and the necessary dental treatment. Prophylaxis, restorations, root canal, extractions, and prosthetic replacement of missing teeth. To inculcate proper oral hygiene, the children are taught hygiene techniques through interactive games and demonstrations. But in order to prevent and maintain, we must eliminate the invisible enemies. These are the harmful bacteria found in a child's oral cavity, which can also contaminate other children through sharing of utensils, at play, etc. With this in mind, we have decided to conduct a one-week pilot study on the effects of proper oral hygiene through proper toothbrushing and with the help of the cheapest and oldest antiseptic known to man, natural sea salt and water. After oral examination and oral hygiene education, the children who were diagnosed with gum disease were asked to rinse twice a day for a week with salt water mouthwash after brushing their teeth. This salt water solution mouthwash is prepared using a glass of lukewarm water and a spoonful of salt. The children were asked to gargle the preparation for 30 seconds, then spat out. On the first and eighth day of the study, the protocol was oral examination and charting of the bleeding on probing, then biological sampling on diseased sites using sterile paper points. These paper points were then placed in dry sterile tubes. Analysis of the bacteria DNA were done using the polymerase chain reaction PCR probe. This tool locates the presence of harmful periodontal pathogens that quickly cause gum infections and tooth loss, thus destroying the smile of these children. This sensitive technique verifies the efficacy of one week's use of the saltwater mouthwash. It can also indicate whether this low-cost mouthwash can produce significant modifications in the bacterial flora and reduce the number of harmful bacteria in the oral cavity of the selected children. Our initial results showed that the use of salt water mouth rinse for one week reduced the rate of AA and the bleeding index of the children participating in the study. Further long-term studies, however, are necessary to confirm these data. In conclusion, our work, like those of thousands of researchers and clinicians across the world, proves that, through simple ways and means, proper or health care can be practiced without significant funding. A constant effort is needed to maintain good clinical results. And finally, bringing back a child's smile is one of the finest work of clinical dentistry.